Hey guys, it's Sarah from She's Crafty and She Knows It, and I am here to show you how to do direct to paper blending. So I have some different color markers here. I have the colorless blender pen that comes with some of the sets of markers, and so I'll link different markers and the paper that I recommend in the description below this video. And so this is the pad I'm gonna be using, Canson Watercolor. It's the extra large pad. There's another kind of uh, Canson Watercolor pad. I will link it in the description below as well. But for direct to paper, I think that using the watercolor pads is the best. Sometimes if you use the mixed media or other kinds of paper, it just kind of makes the paper kind of ball up on it and it doesn't look very nice. So, so I'll be using a piece of the watercolor paper. I'm gonna go ahead and tear my piece off. This paper is really thick, it's really nice to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend these three colors together, the two blues and the purple, with my blender pen on here. But what I like to do when I do direct to paper blending is I like to do, typically I like to do a rough draft kind of with my gray marker. So if you watched the last tutorial that I did that was just the real simple, real basic direct to paper markers with no blending, I did the same thing in the video. So you're just gonna write something with a gray marker. This is a really light gray marker. Um, it's N89 that comes in one of the gray scale packages and you're just going to write whatever you want. So I'm just gonna do the word hi. Y'all are probably tired of me writing the word hi, but it's just something quick and simple to show you. Okay, so I've done it in the gray marker. So this way now I can do the blending and I don't have to try and make up where the letter would be. So I'm gonna do purple at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the gray, where the gray is, with purple. And I'm gonna kinda do like an ombre effect where I'm gonna do purple at the top. Then I'm gonna go and do the dark blue. And you're gonna get really close to touching them, but not quiet. I'm, I leave a little bit of space. And I'm gonna do the light blue at the very bottom. Okay, so now I have kind of the ombre effect, but it's not blended. So I'm gonna use the colorless blender pen. And you're gonna kind of start at the top and you're gonna pull the color from it. So this is picking up, you can see on the tip, hopefully you can see that. It's picking up purple from where I'm marking up on the purple and you kind of drag it down into the blue. And it's kind of blending the two colors together. So you can use, smooth out your lines. So if you kind of go out of where the gray was, it's okay to smooth out your lines. So if it's carrying too much of the purple and you're going down into the light blue, what I do is I have an extra piece of cardstock here and I just kind of scribble on the cardstock until it gets the color off. And even if it looks like it has color, sometimes it'll stay looking a little bit blue for a second, but it's pretty much back to plain and you'll kind of blend. Now you're pulling the dark blue into the light blue. I'm gonna get some of the dark blue off of it so that the bottom is still mainly the light blue. You can go back and do kind of one pull through Okay, now we're gonna pull this, 
this dark blue into the light blue over here. I'm gonna get some of the dark blue off so that I can have a little bit more of the light blue at the end. So just remember, you can always use a paper towel, a piece of computer paper, a cardstock or something to kind of just dab the colorless blender on so that whatever color you're using doesn't stay. Probably need to fill that more in with purple. Let's go ahead and do that. I don't really know why I just did a circle and didn't color it in, but let's. So there, it's nice and purple. Now that I see how purple that is, I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of purple up here. So you just take your time with it. Like this is, I consider this, which maybe I'm crazy, but like really a piece of art. So I just take my time with it. So you can go back, kind of pull the purple down again. I'm gonna pull a little bit of the purple up here from the dot into the top of the eye. Kind of pull some of the blue up to the eye like that. So that's kind of mixed. I'm gonna clean it off so that I don't get, I don't wanna get any purple down here in the blues. So I, since I just touched this, I don't wanna swipe it down there. So clean your colorless blender pin off again. And now you're gonna swipe the dark blue down into the light blue. Now I'm gonna clean it off again because I want the bottom of the eye to be more of the light blue. So there we go. So I've blended it on the paper. And it looks really good when you're done. Just make sure you clean it off again. So like I said, you do not have to use the gray marker to do a rough draft. My thinking personally is if I wasn't going to try and do this without doing a rough draft, it would not be very easy. You would have to kind of know where you're scribbling, where you're doing different colors to blend it together. So to me, using the gray marker as a rough draft makes it so much easier. Okay, now we're going to do another little phrase. So you can kind of play with it with the gray and decide where you want it to be thick if you didn't kind of get it right the first time. So I'm going to grab some new colors. I'm going to do some blues and greens this time instead. So I'm going to start with start with a dark blue. Now I'm going to do the light blue. And get really close to touching it. Now I'm going to go into this light green. And now going down the O, I'm gonna change to dark green. And I'm gonna change back to the dark blue. So you can see it's not joined. Everything has spaces in between it, nothing's blended. So it kind of just looks a little bit choppy. So now I have my colorless blender pen again. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's clean from the last thing I did. I'm just gonna kind of trace over the whole thing, pick up some of the blue. So I'm just kind of smoothing it out with this blender pen. Think about it, it's a little bit like watercolor. It's not the same as using the water brushes if you've used them, but you're just kind of smoothing it out. Pick up some of the blue. You're gonna drag the blue into the green. Now you have to connect the dark green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, it's easier sometimes to drag the darker color into the light. Now 
I'm gonna drag the blue a little bit into the green. There we go. If you go back, like the blender pin went a little bit outside of the marker line and if that bothers you, just go back. You can fix up your lines. So you can always go back over it, make it a little bit darker and blend a little bit more. That's why I like using this watercolor paper because this paper is really thick and it's used to watercolor so it's used to like really being saturated. I might even add some of the dark blue up here. Almost make it look like it's shadowy. I'm gonna get one more piece. I'm gonna do another blending one using some greens. I'm just gonna do one letter to show you, so I'm just gonna do a B. So I did my little rough draft with the light gray marker, and then I have a dark green, a light green, and my blender pen. So this time I'm gonna do the dark on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the bottom area. You can obviously do left to right if you want to do dark on one side, light on the other. So I just kind of pick a space. Like I'm going to say halfway through the letter is where the dark stopping. So anything below that, I'm going to fill in with dark. And above it, I'm going to do the light color. And then we'll blend in the middle. And I'm going to do the light on the top part. And bring it to where they're really close to touching. So now you can see they're not quite connected. It doesn't look blended or anything. It's kind of choppy looking. I'm going to bring my piece of cardstock so that I have something to clean my colorless blender pen. It still has a little bit of like blue and purple on it. So I'm going to clean it off. Make sure it's good to go. And now I... I just want to drive home the point that it's easier, at least from my experience, to drag the dark color up into the light. It's hard to get enough. If you're doing it on a light green and trying to pull the light green into the dark green, it's hard. It's easier if you start in the dark color, kind of start at the very bottom. And like I showed you when I did the high, as you're doing it, it's picking up the green. I just kind of go over the whole area, pick up the dark green, and you're going to pull it. You're pulling the marker up, bringing the dark green into the light. Now if it brings it higher than you want, clean off colorless blender. Otherwise, if you keep going, it might just cover up all of the light green, make it completely dark. So that way you really get to see the light green. Really shows through. So now we're gonna go to the other side, do the same thing. So now I've cleaned off the colorless blender pen. I'm picking up more dark green. Look how much dark green's on the tip. Pick it up. Now you're gonna drag the dark green into the light green. Blend the two together. I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. And then finish blending into the light green. If you decide it's not blended enough, just go back and drag more of the dark color wherever your dark is into the light. So all I'm doing is cleaning off in between because like I said if you're dragging too much of the dark green all the way up the light green you're gonna pretty much lose the light green and it's all gonna become this middle kind of middle green color. I'm gonna drag a little bit more of the dark green kind of up just a little bit right there. So there we go now we have a really pretty green blended letter so I, the only tip really that I have for you is to use some kind of light gray or use a pencil if you want to 
to kind of do a rough draft of where you're going to do it because it'd be really hard to kind of, you're not really writing calligraphy. You're kind of coloring in the different areas and blending them together. So use a light gray, use a pencil, do a rough draft, and then do your dark and light and just blend it together. So that is it. That is how to do the direct to paper blending. I will also be adding some new tutorials soon, so make sure you keep an eye out for them. I want you to make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you see all my new videos. I'll be doing some indirect to paper blending as well as some watercolor blending, some really cool stuff. So definitely subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye guys.